Hello, this is Accelerating Time to Insights with Data Analytics. I'm Scott Jones from Elbit Systems of America, and today I'll be uh, walking you through it's a demonstration of some of the capabilities of IDEA. Elbit Systems of America uh, is the U.S. division of Elbit Systems Limited, a three billion global aerospace and defense company with 12,000 employees in 13 countries. We provide innovative solutions that protect and save lives. Our customers are mainly in the defense, commercial aviation, homeland security, and medical instrument spaces. The U.S. division in North America comprises about 28% of the company revenue, and we have locations in Texas, New Hampshire, Alabama, Mississippi, Virginia, Florida, and Washington, D.C. The graphic on the right shows some of the uh, uh, capabilities that we provide, such as cockpits for the V-22, uh, laser range finding and targeting tools for land forces, aircraft repair, uh, our enhanced vision system, homeland security, and medical instrumentation. The objectives of this seminar is to show you some of the advantages of using data analysis and to provide some real-time examples of data analytic insights using IDEA. Now, the first question we might ask is, why not just take a sample of the relevant transactions? Auditors have been doing that for years. And a random sample has some advantages. It is efficient. Uh, it allows us to make a statistical inference about population characteristics, but it assumes those characteristics are relatively uniform throughout the population. Fraud and other instances of, of policy noncompliance or legal noncompliance doesn't distribute evenly. It's found in uh, small, exceptional transactions within the larger data set. Data analytics allows us to leverage the entire population, which necessarily includes all the exceptions in that data set. Large data sets also allow us to use more advanced statistical techniques in our audit. It also allows us to find multiple indicators of fraud or red flags that these are repeated uh, events that point us to specific high-risk transactions. Last of all, it is efficient, provided you use the right software. And in our opinion, IDEA is the right software. There's an analogy between chemical engineering and data analytics. In chemical engineering, very complex chemical processes are built using small, discrete unit operations. The distillation train in the graphic on the right shows us a series of unit operations that are put together to, to separate a valuable distillate, distillate uh, out of a complex feed. And it has unit operations such as a separation tower, a condenser, a reflux drum, a pump, control valves, reboiler, and a couple of accumulation tanks. Again, in chemical engineering, we take simple unit operations and build complex processes. In IDEA, we have uh, simple unit operations that allow us to build complex analyses. The distillate we're looking for in data analytics are the high-risk transactions, the ones that point to possibilities of fraud or other instances of noncompliance. Some of the unit operations that are available in IDEA include importing source data, data visualization, stratification, summarization, sorting, extracting, finding missing transactions, finding duplicate transactions, and identifying fuzzy matches. The first unit operation we'll look at is importing data. This is an example of what a data import looks like based upon a Windows operating system. This has the advantage that users that are familiar with Windows should find it easy to navigate through the different dialog boxes that are presented during their analyses. The other thing is, is notice here in the Import Assistant the variety of data sources that can be imported into IDEA. This gives us the advantage that we can use and compare and even join together data from a variety of different data sources. This is a uh, blank IDEA project. We've created a project in IDEA for the demonstration today, and at this point it has no data in it. When a project's created, the, uh, it's done simply by 
creating a project, pointing to a folder, and these folders that are shown in the uh, Windows Explorer box here are created automatically and include places to put, place your source data, your exports that you, uh, uh, these might be files that you'll create during the course of the analysis, uh, as well as your idea scripts that we'll talk about later. So we begin importing data by uh, pressing the desktop button, and that brings up the import assistant. In this case, we're going to be importing an Excel file. So we select Microsoft Excel. We select the standard Windows browser button here, and it points to our source file, and we've already populated with the Arizona Payments 2016, which is our source data. We click Next. In this case, this is a tabular data, so we'll check off first row field names, and we'll also import zeros into any, any empty numeric cells. And we click OK. And this is our first idea database uh, right here in the center. Now, the first thing we want to do is we want to compare this to the source data to make sure that we have uh, accurately uh, and completely imported the source data. So one of the tools we use is the control total. And we'll do a control total on the field amount is this numeric field right here. And we see that we have $34,821,002.29. Also down here, we see that the number of records available are 992. So we go from there to our source file. Going to open it up so that we can see it and position it so we can compare it to our idea file. And we select the amount field, and we, we can see here that uh, the control total displayed for the amount field, 34821002.29, exactly matches our control total. And we can see here that the, uh, it shows a count of 993, but it's also counting the header. So we'll take the numerical count of 992 and compare it to the number of records in 992. And we're assured at this point that we've imported the complete file and that our key numeric field is reliable. So we can actually add a comment here, verified record count and control total for amount. And we can put that note there in our audit records. The benefits of importing data, first of all, we have a familiar layout in that uh, the dialog boxes are, are very similar to any other Windows operating system program. We can import data from many, many different sources. We can combine data from different types of sources. And then another important fact is that the, uh, the idea preserves the original data. The data is never destroyed. We can add to it, we can filter it, we can change it, but the original data is preserved throughout the audit. We also looked at data integrity. We compared the control total in the source field to the control total in the uh, IDEA database, and we compared the record count to be assured that our data are complete and reliable. And the benefits of that, we know that we have a, a good data set to work with before we begin going through the, the uh, steps of the analysis. The next tool we'll look at is data visualization, and we'll use the tool called Discover in IDEA to create a default dashboard. When we use the Discover tool, we'll get a dashboard that looks like this that contains a, a pre-configured set of, of charts and statistics at the top. Right, here we are in our um, original database in IDEA, and we select first the Analysis ribbon, and then we select the Discover tool, and it takes a few seconds to come up with the uh, default dashboard. Basically, IDEA is analyzing this entire database and making a set of decisions about the best way to display this data for us and what sort of statistics to calculate that might be interesting. 
It takes a few seconds because there is a large amount of data it has to deal with as well as numerous fields. This is our default dashboard and it's a good start. It gives us some insights. We can immediately look at this bar chart over here that stratifies the data by amount and we can see that we have a highly skewed distribution. While there's a lot of transactions at the low end, we've got a couple of outliers out here too, as a matter of fact, uh, that look a bit intriguing. The line chart over here we'll note is stratified. We can change that if we want to by clicking on this gear, which will bring up a dialog box. And by unchecking stratified, we can get a line chart that actually shows uh, the totals of our, uh, of our data, in this case a, a count of records over time, and we notice there's a high number of records here, and we can make another change to this too. Instead of uh, doing a count, we can actually do a sum of the amount, and now we can see the total amount of our invoices day by day. And as we scan through that, Using the slider bar down here, we see that uh, out here, not only do we have a high number of records, but we've also got a very high amount on this date. So that's something we may want to look at later. So we already have a couple of insights to begin with. This chart down in the lower left is called a tree map, and this allows us to look at uh, various categories and their relative sizes. And again, we can configure this. In this case, the uh, tree map is using the group auth, which is basically the initials of whoever authorized the transaction. And in this case, it's colored by the sum and sized by the count. But it actually might be more interesting to size it by the, by the sum of amount and then color it by the average of amount. So now the size of the relative block show us the uh, relative amount that was processed. We can see that our biggest authorizer was HMV, followed by WJN, BC, and so on. And we also see down here a couple of interesting things. There seem to be some high averages for WJN, WN, and, and W dot N dot. So we have some insights there. Now thinking uh, about uh, our vendors, we might just want to do the same thing for our payees. So we'll click the uh, gear down here on this lower right and get rid of the pie chart, replace it with a tree map. We'll group by payee. Once again, we'll color by the average amount and size by the total amount. And we'll save that. And we can see a couple of interesting things here. And by the way, we can get additional data by hovering over these blocks. As you can see, we can see the average and the sum. And we see here Advanced Consultant not only is our, our uh, appears to be our largest vendor based on amount, uh, but it also has a purple, which indicates the average is a little higher than usual. We also see down here a red block for Matt Cash and Company. Um, it indicates a high average, even though it's, it's not a particularly high total. And we notice here when we look at the data that the average is equal to the sum. So that basically indicates there's one transaction down there for $190,000. And that's a little bit intriguing. So right there we've gathered a little bit of information that uh, is handy. Some red flags, if you will, that point us to Matt Cash, an advanced consultant, and makes us curious about some outliers uh, in the data. And we can do a few other things. We can see up here we have some statistics. There's the number of zero items. Here's the total net amount. Here's the average amount. Uh, we can see that uh, our invoice dates run from January 4th to the 17th of December. And if we want to, we can just add a field here very easily. In this case, we're going to look at the uh, vendor number. And we're going to look for the number of unique values. How many unique vendors do we have? And we see that's 59. And this looks like a, a pretty good set of data here, a very useful dashboard. And so we'll save it. As azpayment.i dash, and it'll save it in one of the folders in our project so we can go back to it later. So starting with the default dashboard here, we customized the dashboard and we identified some red flags, some outliers, some uh, high numbers on the line chart, 
some high averages for WJNWNWN, a high average for Matt Cash and Company, and a somewhat high average and a large amount for advanced consultants. So we've gotten several insights and we're very early in the analysis. So the benefits of visualization. First of all, we get one-click analysis. It easily helps us find a starting point uh, in our data analytic operations, and it allows for customization that we can gain initial insights uh, by developing other charts uh, specific uh, to the data set we're working with. And it has drill down capabilities where we can actually hover and see additional information about the various uh, points and areas presented in the data analytics uh, dashboard. Another useful tool is field statistics. Field statistics allows us to uh, calculate a wide variety of statistics about a numeric field. It will look like this. Uh, the things we look for is we select a numeric field, we get a display that looks like this, and the, uh, we activate it with this field statistics uh, check mark over here in the properties panel. So let's see what that looks like. Over here we go to the properties panel, select field statistics, check number is not very interesting, but amount is, and then we get a variety of statistics. We can see the net value, uh, we've already seen this on the dashboard, we can see the absolute value, which in this case is the same, the number of records, 992, number of zero items, and we have other interesting things down here. We have uh, the average, 35,000, the maximum value, the uh, number of uh, uh, the record number for the min and the max, so we get the min, the max, the numbers, uh, standard deviation for both sample uh, and for uh, population, variance, sample and population, skewness and kurtosis. There's a variety of useful information uh, in this. In one case, uh, one thing I like to use here is the uh, uh, population standard deviation. We're working with the entire population of data and scope, and we see that's pretty close to 30,000, and we'll make a note of that. Uh, because of uh, that, that simply is a, a very handy band to use for stratification, which will be our next tool. So we can pull that off of here. Benefits of field, field statistics. It gives us information about uh, the different fields, or the numeric fields, and it gives us hyperlinks to supporting records. Stratification. Stratification allows us to break up uh, our data into a logical set so we can see the uh, distribution of how the data distributes across various uh, fields. In this case, we're going to stratify on amount, which is our main numeric field. We're going to use the information we got from the standard deviation to select an increment of 30,000. Now, in this case, we're going to use equal intervals, but note, the intervals do not have to be equal. If there's uh, data that's closely grouped and you want to use a smaller interval, uh, that can be done, and uh, if it's more dispersed, you want to go to a larger group, you can do that too. There's a lot of flexibility in this particular tool. Returning to our original data set by clicking on data in the properties box, we now select stratification off the analysis ribbon. We're going to stratify on the numeric field amount. We're going to use an increment of 30,000, so we change that to 30,000. It already knows that the lower limit of our data is zero, so we simply click 30, 60, 90, 120, 150, and 180. That's six bands. That ought to be sufficient to capture most of our data. Total on amount, and click OK and this is the result of our data. So we can see here the number of records as well as the total amount in each of our bands. 0 to 30 we have 533 records so with a total of about 6.2 million and so on. Now what's interesting in this uh, particular data set is out here in the two upper bands there are zero transactions but above 180,000 there's actually two what we would call upper limit exceptions. And these are those uh, two outliers that we saw on the bar chart back in data visualization. Now one of the benefits is these, wherever you see these blue numbers that are underlined, that's a hyperlink. So we can actually hyperlink to those two transactions 
and we can display them. We see here it's vendor M027 Joyce Tech and M100 Matt Cash and Company. Now this should be a familiar transaction because we already saw this transaction in data visualization also. So those are very interesting. Now we can uh, uh, save those directly to a new database. So we'll just call those, we'll create a database called Upper Limit Exceptions and save that for later. And see here in our file explorer, we've now created an upper limit expect exceptions with two records in it. So there's one red flag that we've got a big gap in the data and another red flag that uh, we've got these two transactions, one of which has already popped up as uh, unusual on data visualization. So the benefits of data stratification include it shows the distribution of our data, it helps us identify outliers in the data, and it has hyperlinks to records by stratum. 